Hi everyone, I welcome you once again to the series of these uh, you know lectures which talk about uh, the accounting for financial instruments. Specifically, we are talking about the financial assets as a part of this uh, series of lectures. Uh, friends, what we have talked about so far is uh, you know looking at uh, uh, you know the business model for uh, you know uh, holding a particular financial asset with us. Okay, so what we talked about so far to meet the cost model, we are we are talking about the first condition where you know the business model test should be met by by the financial assets that is uh, the very objective is to hold the financial asset to to have the you know to collect contractual cash flows in order to collect contractual cash flows right an extension of uh, you know this particular model uh, refers to for example looking at those financial assets as held by an entity the objective of which is to collect contractual cash flows and also selling those financial assets right if i bring you back you know to that point where we said that i'm using a cost model or an amortized cost model model for measuring financial assets then we said that uh, you know we have a very little flexibility we do have flexibility but it is not a predominant you know predominantly available with us where we are able to sell the investments at at our discretion right but here we are talking about uh, that both these objectives that is objectives of holding the investments that is the financial assets So be it the collection of contractual cash flows and be it selling those financial assets, both these objectives are integral, you know, to achieve the purpose for which the financial assets are, you know, uh, the investment is made into such financial assets. Okay. So let's, let's try to understand first with the help of an example, what are we trying to say here? And then let's see are we able to connect with this or not okay and then we can obviously follow on the accounting part of it as well okay so let us say that there is a company x okay that needs to invest in a major plant in few years okay so of course the company x is generating cash flows from the business and it is keen to of course you know uh, keep some cushion to be able to you know uh, invest into that major plant so these cash flows are from time to time invested into or invested in various schemes okay so these schemes could be these financial assets could be short term or these could be even long term okay now the very idea of long term of course is to have sustainable returns or higher returns or maybe a short term opportunity does not arise at any point in time but still if i say let's say this is to be you know purchase in five years time maybe these schemes with the long term maturity may have a range of or maturity of let's say more than five years i'm taking a number eight years all right but then bear it in mind that you still want to dispose of these investments because you are thinking of buying that plant in five years time all right likewise of these short term investments these may be sold before their maturity in case an opportunity comes to 
make more gains and invest the proceeds in better investments or high income generating investments here right now here the objective of the organization is to you know to invest into these so so called securities or financial assets is not just to earn income by means of holding these assets but also to of course sell the investments right so there is there is a little more frequency or there is there is there is a you know more frequent sales happening in these kind of you know models or or the way these business are or these investments are we kind of you know held by the entity so here we are saying that that both the collection of contractual cash flow and the sale of financial assets is integral without these two the company is not operating okay so what we are saying here is in this case there are two objectives being met which which clarifies which clearly indicates that the cost model cannot be applied the cost model cannot be applied here right but then the standard starts offering us an option of of course the fair value three through oci the other comprehensive income approach started coming into our books now right the standard specifically suggests that under this approach we are saying that any interest or dividends or other gains will be taken to pnl as based on realization okay until the time these investments are held any changes in fair value of that investment will be taken through the other comprehensive income right here we are saying that the company sells to invest again maybe for that particular objective of let's say you know uh, funding that particular asset okay so here we are saying that any changes in the fair value which need to be brought in because we are using a fair value through oci method we cannot use the cost model for sure right so all these investments are required to be shown at their fair value on the reporting date but any changes in the fair value will be taken through the other comprehensive income okay so what i'm trying to say here is if for example i made an investment in security of let's say 1000 dollars okay my interest income comes to let's say at the rate of 6% is coming at Sixty dollars. All right. Let us say the amount is recovered, as in the 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 interest is received. All right. But then the fair value on reporting date. of this investments come to let's say 1020 right so here what you would notice is that you have 
earned an income of 60 as an interest income and the par value the overall value of the investment has also increased from 1000 to 1020 which means that my total profit comes to 60 plus 20 right but my standard says till the time it is recovery of those you know contractual cash flows this is a realized profit and any change in the value is an unrealized profit that is where we would say my accounting for for this entire piece of information would be so let's say if i make an investment debit investment credit bank $1,000 all right that's my first entry my second entry is I've received an income I've earned an income so debit bank $60 credit interest income going to PNL $60 okay third the in investment value increases from 1000 to 1020 so here I'm saying my investment increases by $20 and this gain is taken through other comprehensive income as an unrealized profit. The very, very idea of showing this through unrealized profit or unrealized gains or losses account that is the OCI account is that the primary objective is not to sell. The primary objective is not speculation, right? We still wait probably, you know, most of the times until maturity, okay? The, the collection of contractual cash flows is also an equal constituent, equal part or an integral part of holding these financial assets, right? And that is where we say that till the time you are making a gain, through interest or dividends, show it into the PNL, normal accounting, and any changes in the fair value should be reported through OCI. That means what? It means that such investments, I need to keep a track of How much is the interest income and how much are the changes in the fair value, right? So if I say that, I did not receive the income, okay? So let us say that my original value was $1,000, so investment. All right, interest at the rate of 6% is $60, not received, which means that cumulatively this investment will become 1060. Okay, let us say I'm still taking the value as fair value on reporting data is 1020 now. That means what? Since I've not received this money, it still becomes my realized profit. There's no problem with that. That is the objective of recovering but now my investment has gone from 1000 plus 60 which is 1060 to 1020 which means that I will take it to the OCI and recognize a loss an unrealized loss of $40 here right so that is that is one significant difference that you start witnessing there is there is there's a volatility in your balance sheet, not necessarily in your P&L because any gains or losses for the changes in the fair value are taken to three other comprehensive income. So here we have started looking at it. When the objective of me holding an investment With the same business model test, we are saying that the business model 
is to hold financial assets in order to collect contractual cash flows right as one of the conditions there is still one more condition we're going to talk about that later but if it is very clear that this is the only condition okay then we say we may land up using the amortized cost method all right this is my let's say you know one of the situations here that we're talking about another scenario we're looking at is not just this not only to collect contractual cash flows but also this is very important to sell financial assets right if this is the method then we use or show these investments at fair value through OCI right here we are saying that any changes in fair value are ignored all right any changes in the fair value are ignored here we are saying that any changes in fair value are shown through OCI right subject to these two conditions being met let us say I'm just taking a small point here that my business model is not driven towards collection of contractual cash flows my, my very objective of holding these investments are to you know make some short term gains mean some speculative gains this is where very briefly I can say I'm going to use the category which is fair value through PNL. That means that any changes in fair value are taken through, of course, PNL. We have to obviously discuss this more in detail, but predominantly my business model test would want me to assess whether my objective is to hold contractual cash flows or in, uh, to hold financial assets in order in order to collect contractual cash flows very specifically only to collect contractual cash flows the second one not just the contractual cash flows but also the sale of these financial assets and the third one is forget the contractual cash flows i'm more into the sales sales purchases and things like that so accordingly my accounting method will get changed here right that is the significance of the business model test very specifically the standard expects us to look at all these parameters come to a conclusion and do the accounting after having classified the financial assets under these categories right one very important discussion that we have done at this point in time we look at beyond these points we start to understand these financial assets more in detail accounting thereof and that's how it is right so keep watching these lectures do subscribe to our channel and uh, happy learning. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.